essentially what we're going to do uh, is try to figure out a way in which uh, we can uh, figure out which way the electrons are going to flow spontaneously. All right, and figure out why. Why would electron? Why do electrons want to flow spontaneously from iron to permanganate? That's the thing, and it, it really is um, all about potential energy again. When we talk about any reactions uh, happening, you we usually preface it is this happens because it's going from high potential energy to low potential energy, and that's essentially why electrons would do that as well. Um, spontaneous redox reactions follow that same pattern. So they're going to go from high potential energy to low potential energy. Instead of just talking about this in terms of kilojoules, like we would have done for enthalpy for thermochemistry, uh, since the uh, electrons are charged particles, we actually have to use a different uh, unit uh, that measures their potential energy difference called the volt. And it turns out one volt is a joule per Coulomb. So it takes potential energy and puts it in terms of charge. So a joule per coulomb is a volt. But for the most part, we can think of them, and I do, I mean, it's not the, technically the most uh, correct way to do it. I think of voltage and potential energy as the same thing, except for voltage is potential energy for charged particles. Potential energy is, you know, uh, potential energy for everything, or joules would be potential energy for anything. Okay. So when we talk about uh, the voltage, or what we'll do is we'll call it the cell potential, we'll define it as the potential energy difference There's like a party going on outside, isn't there? Like they need to go to class. Jeez. They need to stop having fun and go to class. <laughs> Potential energy between the two half reactions. And we abbreviate it as E, another E, sub cell, so cell potential. And the analogy in your book for the spontaneous flow of electrons would be the spontaneous flow of water. So if you connected, if you have two beakers and you drilled a hole in each of those two beakers and then you connected them with this tube and then you filled one beaker higher in water than the other, water would flow from one beaker to the other until they're both at the same level, right? Mm -hmm. That's not okay analogy. Okay, I don't know why you're drilling holes in beakers. This is very good beakers. Why are you doing this? Okay, we could reuse those beakers. Now they got holes in them. All right, so all I think about this is just going downhill again. All right, electrons flow from high potential to low potential, just like anything else. So electrons will flow from high cell potential to lower. And we can calculate that uh, cell potential difference by just knowing the half cell potential, the half cell potential of our reduction half reaction and we usually would just apply that as this, so this would be my, which occurs at the cathode, so we would label that as E, uh, and it usually is under standard state conditions, but I'm not, not really worried about that. So the half cell potential for my reduction, half reaction, because that's where electrons are going, right? And we label the half cell potential 
for my oxidation uh, half reaction as the anode. And this really is a thermodynamic property or measurement. It's a potential energy difference. And how do we measure or calculate potential energy differences in the simplest terms? Final minus initial, right? So we can take the half cell potential for our, our, our reduction half reaction, final, minus the half cell potential for our reduction half reaction, which is called the anode. So E sub cell equals the cell potential at the cathode minus the cell potential at the anode. Yes, you can think of the cathode as the positively charged one. Yeah. That does bring us to a good point, is that it turns out that in, uh, different from Gibbs free energy, which we used to calculate uh, spontaneous previously, what was the sign of delta G changing Gibbs free energy for a spontaneous reaction? Negative, right? For cell potential, because now we're talking about electrons with a negative charge, what are, would be electrons that would be attracted to a positive charge or a negative charge? Would an electrons be attracted to a positive charge or a negative charge? Positive. So they're always going to be attracted to a more positive cell potential. So it's going to look a little weird when we talk about lower poten cell potential having a positive, which looks like it should be a higher number. That shouldn't be lower. It's positive. And the higher cell potential of having a more negative number. You can think of it, the lower one has positive of getting more of electrons to bring it up to that level. Yeah, so that's the way I think about it. I just think about it as the electrons are going to be attracted to that positive yeah. cell potential. Even though, and we would call that lower potential energy even though it's numerically a higher number. A little backwards because electrons are negative. Okay. So what's that mean? If we're going downhill in terms of potential energy towards a po more positive value, whatever this is, let's say this is plus 2, and this is minus 1, plus 2 minus a minus 1 is going to give you plus 3, right? So you're going to get cell potential values, uh, positive cell potential values for spontaneous redox reactions, okay? So if E sub cell, the cell potential, is positive, the reaction is spontaneous. If the cell potential for the reaction is negative, that would mean the electrons are going towards a more negative cell potential. They're not going to want to do that. It's non-spontaneous. Then there's uh, one other possibility. You need E sub cell equals zero. Did you throw your voice? I swear I heard you say it from back there. That was freaky. So if E sub cell equals zero, what's the, what do you think that means? It's at equilibrium. <laughs> and when we talked about recharging uh, batteries, this is actually what happens. Okay, electrons flow from your uh, anode to your cathode while you're using it, and eventually, I mean, this is a pretty good example. Eventually, these water levels are going to equal out, and then water is going to start stop flowing. 
okay? Water molecules are still going to move. They're still doing a liquid dance. The water molecules are moving back and forth, but there's no change in the level. So that's what happens. Your electrons reach uh, basically equilibrium. And guess what? You can't make any, you can't do any work from equilibrium. So you could start saying that, and it would be more um, scientifically accurate. Okay, if your phone is quote unquote dead or dying, you say no, it's at equilibrium. Doesn't that sound better? <laughs> okay, it's an inanimate object. It's not alive or dead. Okay, it's at equilibrium. I need to recharge my phone. My phone's almost at equilibrium. People will be impressed. People are always impressed by how I talk, and or annoyed, one of the two. 